Hello, this is Mike Campbell with Glossica, and I'm sitting down today with Dr. Emmanuel Turnon. That is correct. And it, it's a pleasure to meet you, finally. Finally, yes. And uh, good to hear your speech here at the Polyglot Conference. Thank you. And you, uh, you have a background in electrical engineering. That is correct, yeah. You're a software engineer, and you're also a polyglot. Yes. I can see a handful of languages here from Europe, from Asia. Yep. And you also speak Python. Yeah, well, <laughs> I speak Python, Java, A computer Swift, language. yeah, programming <laughs> languages because yeah, that, to, that's my day job. And we I'd had to throw like... in the, the polyglot as including those yeah, languages, absolutely, right? Absolutely, okay. right? Yeah, we so, can do that too. So th this is really fascinating, and you've also published this book called Traditional Chinese Characters, a Translingual Writing System. That is correct. Uh, which you can find on Amazon, and you have kanji, hanzi, and hanza. Yes written here as the pronunciations. And how do you right. say that in Vietnamese, by the way? Do it's, you know? Uh, I think it's Han Tu. I'm, I'm not sure about the the, the tones okay. are Vietnamese because... Right, Han Tu. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it's... Uh, right. So I was reading... Say, th yeah, yeah so. I was reading through this. It's, it's fascinating. And I remember through uh, my own study of these languages, uh, having gone through picking up all of this data from various sources. But it's yeah. hard to find things all on the same page like you've done. That's basically the reason why I felt like I and had to write a book like this because th there are so many resources on the internet regarding and I and I am familiar yes. with Ken Lundy's um, yeah. book on yeah, CJKV yeah. but He's but this is a really, really this is a really good thing for like the layman like if you want to learn Absolutely. anything about the East Asian languages and how Chinese characters influence have influenced Korean or Vietnamese yes. and um, this is an absolutely uh, great resource to getting uh, I mean, I think that if you read this book, you could walk out and and go talk with your friends, and you'd be an expert, even without having to learn the language. Yeah, you'd yeah, be close yeah, to being that, an expert that, on, on, on how on all how this Chinese works. characters work. Yeah, that, that's great. That, that's basically the, the reason why I wanted to write this book, because I read a lot on various sources about all this, and uh, the information is there, but it's the, the, there was like no central place where you could find all this. But what I really love about it is yeah. that you don't need to have any knowledge yeah. of the languages before you read this. That is true. Yeah. And when you finish reading it, you won't know the languages, but you will know enough to be able to do your job very absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and I love I love that approach about the book because it's not forcing you into like, oh, you have to learn this language in order to understand yeah. this concept. That, that, that was yeah. not my intention when I read it. Yeah, and, and so you can see here like the green versus the red areas mm -hmm. that use the different kind of characters. Absolutely, you have that yeah. laid out really beautifully. Thank you. Um, so tell us more about some of the personal projects that you work on. Uh, yeah. I heard you've got an app, uh, or I mean a, a, a dictionary as yes, well. Okay. Yes, so there, there's, it's basically the, the perfect companion to the book because you know when you, when you learn about Chinese characters and how they can be used in multiple languages, uh, as a language learner you want to make use of this uh, like common vocabularies and be able to cover all the different scripts no matter whether you use simplified, traditional, or Japanese characters, you want to be able to look for common words between all these different languages. And the dictionary I've made, which is called CJKV Dict, uh, does exactly that. So whenever you search for a word, you're going to have information about all four languages you get automatic, simplified to traditional conversion. So for anybody who, who doesn't recognize the acronym, uh, yes. C, C yeah. is for Chinese, yes. J is for Japanese, K is for Korean, V is for Vietnamese. So we normally yes. say it in that order as well. We always say C, J, yes. K, and sometimes add the V yeah, to that's include correct. Vietnamese. That's correct. There's a website, uh, so you can use it uh, yeah, on, a, on a browser, basically on your laptop, desktop, uh, whatever you wish. And uh, there's an app version for iOS and Android. That so is, how do we uh, use it? It's completely free. You just download it. And then on the main page you have like a, you have the, a search bar and whenever you enter characters and you press that the That sounds hard button. for some, I mean, if, assuming I don't know a, a language, how do I enter yeah. a character? So uh, what is, oh, what is well. one of the methods that I can use to enter <laughs> um, a character? Okay, so if you already know how to write the language on a computer on, or on your smartphone. No, we don't need to answer it. <laughs> then but you're going to be okay. But, but how for the people who don't know how to enter a character? That's the thing. You can also input uh, phonetic phonetic transcriptions okay. of uh, yeah, 
so if I know the spelling, if I yeah. know the spelling of Tokyo, and I want to know what the Chinese for characters example. for Tokyo are, can I type in T O K Y O? Uh, for or do I have to add in the you need long. to know that it's a long vowel, so, so you I have to type in T O U K Y O U. K Y O U. That's but a good yeah. question, though, because yeah, I have to. You're know. right. Absolutely right. Yeah. So if I'm looking at Japanese and I'm traveling around Japan mm -hmm. like we are now, yes. and I see the sign and it says T O with a line on yeah. top, then I know that that's a long that's O. That's a long vowel. But so it's you... not an O O, but it's an O U. Yes. Right. Okay. Because okay, you still need to be able to know a little bit about the language, but that's why it's targeted at language learners, right? Because when you start learning Japanese, you learn about long vowels that they're mostly written with O U and not O O only in some cases. Yeah. Well, has to do whether the word comes from is like a native Japanese word or so, a Sino. Right. So, the, so your words that have been borrowed into Japanese from yes, Chinese yeah. are normally going to have the U ending on those long yeah, vowels. Yeah, that's correct. That's so correct. the word for far, mm -hmm. toi, yeah. is actually a double O, but that's yes, a, native it's Japanese, a native Japanese word. It's a native yeah, Japanese yeah, word. So that's if correct. it's coming from Chinese, it's going to have, normally what we would say is the NG ending in Chinese yes. becomes the OU right. ending in Japanese. Mm, no, absolutely and some have right. shifted in another direction. Mm -hmm. They've gone to EI. So like the word me, yeah, yeah, like bright, like me. you get myo, yeah, or actually, you get to, me. Yeah, right? yeah because okay. I'm talking like about Meiji this period. in the Yeah, for example, I'm talking about this in the book, about the, the different pronunciation of Japanese kanji because they were imported from China, from different parts of China at different times in history, in the, in the history of Japan. So that's why sometimes you end up in... Uh, I was just with, reading uh, about that today. Yeah, I, was yeah, trying, yeah. I was trying to act smart here <laughs> to, to kind of show that I had read your yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so you, you mentioned the, uh, the kanon yes, the, and the toon, the toon, right? The kanon. See if I can find that um, page. Yeah. Or you know where it is, yeah, right? Yeah, I know where it is. Or you can just, <laughs> tell, you can just tell us about it. So uh, the, kanon, yeah. the kanon and then yeah. there's the toon reading. Exactly. So there's... Okay, the first is the uh, goon. Gohan the the Gohan okay. was like, it's the, from the, the Shanghai the Go, region. Exactly, it's the okay. same as the Wu, so the Wu Chinese, like the Shanghai region, from was like at the during the sixth century or something like this. Really, really long yeah, time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, it was the, the first reading to be imported. Okay. Uh, then you had the Kanon that came during. Um, and that's the yeah, majority the, uh, of. It was during the Tang Dynasty. Is that the majority of, of um, readings in Japanese are Kanon? Um, not or is sure it tend to be statistics. more Go on? Oh, okay. I'm not sure about this. So it's kind of split. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and I've seen some of those Toon readings that are very similar to the Mandarin. It's, all, it's almost as if they were like really late yeah. borrowings, right? Yeah, yeah. I okay. think the Toon are the, the latest one that were. It was during the Song Dynasty or the Ming Dynasty, so a lot later than, you know, the, the Kanon and Goon readings. Really. Because a lot of the NGs in Mandarin still remain as an N in Japanese yes. on the Toon readings. Yeah, oh. that's correct. Yeah, oh. yeah, because, I mean, yeah, you have to, to see that when the Goon readings were imported, uh, yeah, people in China weren't speaking modern standard Mandarin, they were speaking like... Uh, so this is interesting, if I, if I know a Chinese character and I know yeah. how to read it, let's say in Mandarin, mm -hmm. then I can go through that process like I just did to kind of get an yeah. educated guess of what it might be in Japanese. You could, yeah. But if I'm taking the word like Ming, mm -hmm. and I go into, uh, let's say, Korean, yeah. something different happens, right? Mm, that's true, because, uh, yeah, I think it's Myung in, in yeah, this... Uh, that's yeah, that's what I remember it as. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's uh, a place in Seoul called Myeongdong. Yeah. Right. That's correct, and, and I always would remember use the same right. character, yeah. 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 The, the, and then if we go down to, and of course there are the different Chinese languages and dialects, like mm -hmm. you've got the um, uh, the Taiwanese or the Cantonese, yeah. Um, yeah, very course. similar readings, mm -hmm. uh, but then we, when we get to Vietnamese, then we get like, um, I don't know, what would it be in Vietnamese? Yeah. I think that the phonological system of Vietnamese is, is a lot uh, wider than... Uh, I think it's M-I-N-H, and the tone goes the opposite way. So Could be. M I N H with a fallen tone. I if I, if I if I if I guess. I trust you on that. <laughs> uh, I, I did I did research this is, on this many years ago, and I okay. think I have a, a rule of thumb to try to to remember. All right. <laughs> Actually, this is a, a, a typical use case for CJK readings. Oh, is so it? Okay. Yeah. If you want to know, you know how to pronounce the character in Chinese in Mandarin, for example. So you just input the Mandarin pronunciation. If you know what the character means, you can find it in, in the list of results, and then you look at all the pronunciations in all other. Personally, um, I feel yeah. that Mandarin is not a good base language. I think that um, Cantonese is probably right. the best base yeah. language yeah, because I've that before, yeah. it retains all of the ancient um, variations that you can now map to all the other languages. Mm -hmm. So I think for a Cantonese right. speaker, learning any of the other languages in East Asia is super fast for vocabulary acquisition, mm. at least. 
Um, as a Mandarin speaker, I feel it's sometimes a little bit more challenging. It's, I'm really curious to know. Yeah. What are you working on in the future? Is, are you allowed to talk uh, about it? What's your next yeah, big project? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, CJK Village is not finished. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's still quite a few features I'm working on right now. So how about a word like uh, the, the Japanese word for tegami? Yes. I mean the Japanese <laughs> word tegami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is so, the, the Japanese word for uh, letter. Yeah, that's, that's correct. So, uh, so if, I, if you translate that into um, Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, currently your dictionary does it literally. Yes. So it, are, you, are you planning to do a, a version where you will translate that into the single character Xin? Ah, I see what you, you see, yeah, sorry. yeah, I see, I see what you're talking about, but um, not really. But what's cool with CJK Vedict is, that, okay, it's not meant to be a Chinese to Japanese dictionary or Chinese to Korean. It's meant to be a um, dictionary that, that shows you that sometimes, you know, the same characters can mean completely different things, like as in oh, the case so of, when of, I, when of I look Tegami. It up, yeah. It'll so, show me what the different meanings are. Exactly. Okay. So you will see, ah, oh, that's interesting. We have false friends here. So a we false have, like, friend. Exactly. So letter in Japanese and toilet paper in, in Chinese, you there know. You go. And uh, yeah, there are a couple more examples like uh, kung bu hada in Korean, so to study. In mm. Japanese, uh, the, the equivalent word is kufu, which means to solve something ingeniously. It has and then we have the borrowing in English from Chinese, which is. Yeah, the, the, the kung fu, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but actually, yeah I, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know if it comes from the, the exact same character. But actually, when we speak Chinese, kung fu, kung fu is, does yeah. not always mean a martial art, it right. means. Like some effort. My hard, my hard work right. is also hard my work. kung fu. So it, it right. has multiple uses, uh, uses in Chinese. Yeah.